Man shows cops doll in freezer after disturbing discovery in dad's bed. Donald Meshi Jr., a 32-year-old Lancaster, Pennsylvania man, first drew the attention of police after they received a call from a family member expressing concern over the well-being and mental health of her relative. Responding to the report, a police officer arrived at Meshi's residence, a small apartment in the 200 block of West Strawberry Street, just before 9 a.m. on a Wednesday morning to perform a welfare check. Sadly, nothing could have prepared the responding officer for what they were about to see, even though the concerned family member had given the police a grim warning. According to the woman who alerted authorities, Meshi had told her that there was a severed head in his freezer and a cadaver in a bed in the home. As the officer arrived, she told him she had seen what she believed was the head of a family member in the freezer after she had pers- The officer knocked on the door and questioned Meshi, who reported escorted the responding officer to the kitchen in his apartment. There, he removed what he claimed was part of a cadaver doll from the freezer, WGAL reported. On a white dinner plate that Meshi had removed from the freezer and presented to the officer sat a human head. At that point, the responding officer called for backup and Meshi was taken to the Lancaster City Police Station to be questioned by detectives. Unfortunately, things were about to get even more bizarre as Meshi told detectives that he had made a disturbing discovery in his dad's bed. According to Meshi, he found a cadaver doll in his father's bedroom early the previous morning. The doll sounded and looked like his father, Meshi explained during the police interview. He attacked the doll he said, admitting to stabbing the cadaver doll in the chest for two to three minutes with an eight or nine inch knife. But, that wasn't even the worst of it. After stabbing the so-called doll Meshi then used a handsaw to dismember the body before putting the severed parts, including the arms, legs, and head, in garbage bags, which he then placed in the basement, court documents allege. The following morning, he retrieved the head from the basement and put it in the kitchen freezer, police said. Donald Meshi Jr. then put the torso in a garbage bag and placed it in a footlocker, before using a dolly to transport the footlocker outside, where he placed it in a car. By the time police received the call and performed the welfare check, parts of the dismembered body were found scattered all over the house the Daily Mail reported. The coroner later confirmed that the head was indeed human and it, as well as the other dismembered body parts, belonged to 67-year-old Donald Meshi the suspect's father, who had died of multiple stab wounds before being cut to pieces. Donald Meshi Jr. was arrested for killing his father and dismembering his body. He was booked into the Lancaster County Prison and charged with criminal homicide, abuse of a corpse, and tampering with evidence. Sadly, this wasn't his first run-in with the law. Just six months prior to killing his father, Meshi pushed a woman into some boxes, causing her minor injuries, at a home in Lancaster Township. He was charged with harassment and pleaded guilty May 5 before District Judge Mary Spinagle Lancaster Online reported. Spinagle gave Meshi the option of enrolling in anger management counseling and completing six classes instead of paying a $50 fine and court costs of about $163. Donald Meshi Jr., who has been described as having somewhat of a temper and one whose feathers could be ruffled a little easily, either skipped the anger management option or failed to fulfill it, opting instead to pay the fines. This seems incredibly unfortunate for his father, who was described as always nice and the sweetest guy, and who might still be alive if his son was forced to get the mental health help he needed, instead of receiving a slap on the wrist in the form of a small fine. This case also speaks to another important issue. As we hear calls for more social workers and less law enforcement, remember this case and the words of CPT. Michael Winters. You can't imagine running into something like this, Obviously, it's a traumatic experience for anyone to experience, including police officers, so yeah, it's a horrific scene. Horrific and traumatic, indeed. Sadly, this is the kind of gruesome discoveries police must be prepared to encounter when performing a welfare check, and I'm not so sure that's what our social workers signed up for.